Hi there and welcome back to this Integrated Math 1 video series. This is uh, Lesson 3 in Unit 3 of Integrated Math 1. In this video we're going to talk about function notation and all of the um, intricacies of working with function notation. So uh, before we do that, uh, let's go ahead and do these five problems for bell work, a little warm up, and then we'll talk about them here in just a second. Okay, so it says uh, number one, Steven has $10 today. Uh, and that's day zero. And gains an allowance for household chores of $3 a day. Write a function to represent how much Stephen has X days from today. So if we were to think about you know, previous videos, we've talked about this, this constant amount, this starting value, whatever you want to call it. And then we've had this like a um, repeated addition for each increase of one in, in X, or for each increase in one in, in the days since now, um, how much do we go up or down? And so there's really two components to linear functions. Uh, so we're gonna start with Y equals, and then we start out with, with 10, right? So, so there's 10 today. Uh, so we have 10, which is that, that constant or starting amount. And then for each increase in X, we go up by an additional $3. So uh, we want to continue to add multiples of three for each uh, additional day. So it'd be three X plus 10. So let's just try this to make sure. So if we were to input zero for X, it'd be three times zero is zero, plus 10 is 10. So put in zero, you get out 10. Uh, if you put in one, Three times one is three, plus 10 is 13. So after one day, we have $13. Two days, if we put two in, we would get 16. Three in, we would get 19, and so on and so forth. So this follows the, the pattern, uh, that, that recursive idea of adding $3 every day. Uh, and so that confirms that our equation is, is correct. All right, number two, two times three times four times five, we may have uh, had a situation like this before where you can group and do the multiplication of two times five first, because that makes 10. So we have two times five is 10, and then in the middle we have three times four is 12, so we can actually multiply it that way. 10 times 12 is 120. Describe how you would increase 452 by 6%. Well, let's see, 452, Increase by six, that'd be 452 times 1.06, or 106% of the initial value, uh, which is 452. Um, there are other ways to do that, but this is, is the way that I would recommend because it only requires one operation or one step. All right, uh, next up, what is 0.3 repeating, so that bar means that the three is repeating over and over and over again. So 0.3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. And, and what is that in fraction form? So you may recognize this uh, decimal uh, and just know that it's one third. But I also want to show you uh, an additional way. Anytime you have a repeated fraction, you can take the value that's being repeated so three in this case, and put it over that many nines. So because we only have one digit in this case, so uh, a digit of three, I'm gonna put it over that many nines, so just one nine. From there, we can simplify this fraction and get one third. So let me give you another quick, quick example. How about 0.47? And the four seven is repeating, so it's four, 0.474747. That's going to equal 47, again, over that many nines, so 9, 9. And then we could go about simplifying that fraction if we, if we could from there. All right? So just kind of give you an example of converting from a repeated decimal to a fraction. All right, number five. What is the next term of the sequence below? Uh, see, so it looks like we are, yeah, subtracting 6 each time. So if we subtract 6 one more time, we're going to actually end up with negative seven. All right, our goal for today, as I mentioned earlier, is to work with what we call function notation. All right, so we need to use and interpret function notation. So we're going to use it in that we're going to be able to understand 
kind of how, how to relate it back to our, our function, but then also interpret it in the context of a, of a real world situation. All right, so if we go back to our bell work problem number one here, Stephen had $10 uh, and then gained $3 each day. So we came up with our function, y equals um, 3x plus 10 was what we come up, came up with, right? But we can also rewrite this in a different way. Instead of using y equals 3x plus 10, we can actually write it as f of x equals 3x plus 10. And you're probably wondering why would we want to do that when we are we can just write it as y equals. Two reasons. One, it allows us to name the function. We've named this function f. Okay? Um, so that allows us to work with multiple functions. So let's say I had another function, uh, g of x equals uh, 2x minus 4, for example. I can, I can talk about these functions, and, and, and you know which one I'm talking about. So if, if I refer to f of x, you know I'm talking about the first one. All right, so I can name functions using um, that notation there. So I can name f of x, g of x, h of x, um, really anything um, in that way. Secondly, it tells us not only the name of the function, but it tells us what variable we're working with. Most of the time, you've probably already uh, been, been using x for the most part. However, there may be other variables. Uh, another common one is t for time. So it names the variable, so I know what variable I'm working with in here. All right, so if I um, write f of x equals m x plus b All right you know that um uh, maybe from a previous course or something that that m and b the, the, that's our slope and y intercept are our con like our constant change and then our starting value x is the variable though that's what's that is what's uh, increasing you know uh, as we go throughout the situation here or, or decreasing so x is our variable here not m and not b. That's, that's the main point I wanted to make here. All right, so it allows us to name the variable uh, involved in our situation. So that's two reasons why we want to use function notation to represent a function instead of, you know, y equals or something like that. All right, so um, I've got uh, an activity, uh, in this Desmos activity for us. So I'll link that in the um, uh, YouTube uh, description or in the play pause it. Um, but I'm going to go through it now, so you can kind of go through it with me if you'd like. So function notation is used to describe the input and output for a given function. So f of x describes the function f with an input variable of x. So we kind of already talked about that, right? Uh, another example might be g of t. g of t describes the function g with an input variable of t. All right, so it kind of goes through... Um, you know, the best practices here for choosing the letter. Um, for example, a function of height in terms of time. So we, height in terms of time. So height is our output in terms of time, which is our input. So instead of using f of x, we might use letters that actually represent what we're talking about here. So h is the height and t is time. So um, I'm inputting t and the output is uh, h of t or the height at that time. All right, so um, we talked about how to like maybe write a function in, in that notation, but there's also other things we can do with it to uh, describe characteristics of this, this function or things about this function. So uh, at the top here, I've got f of x equals negative two x plus seven. It says find f of four. So f of four. So I've replaced the input variable x with a number four. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do throughout the, throughout, throughout the function. I'm gonna replace the input variable, which was x, with four. So I've taken the x out of the function, and I'm gonna put in four, I'm gonna substitute four in for x, and I'm going to simplify. So negative two times four is negative eight, plus seven is negative one. All right, let's look at another example. Um, this is what's called a, <clears throat> a quadratic function. You're going to get to that a lot more in integrated math too, but I think you know how to square something right now, and that's all that matters here. Okay, so 
uh, g of x equals x squared plus 7 uh, plus x minus 7. It says find g of 2. Again, from g of x to g of negative 2, we replace the input variable with negative 2. So we're going to substitute negative 2 anywhere we see the input variable x. So g of negative 2 is going to be, instead of x squared, we're going to put negative 2 squared. Notice put parentheses around it. That's going to be important here in just a second. Plus x, right, which is now negative 2, minus 7. Equals, okay, let's go back here. A negative 2 squared. When you square something, you're just multiplying it by itself, right? So really you have negative 2 times negative 2 right here. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. All right, then minus 2, minus 7. 4 minus 2 minus 7 ends up being negative 5. So really, when we have f of a number or g of a number uh, or h of a number, we're just substituting that number in for the input variable. Even if there's more than one input variable, we're going we're gonna to input that value into, into all of them, Okay, however many there are. So, let me give you a second to try these two. Uh, first one says g of x equals negative 2x plus 7. What is g of negative 3? Second one, h of t equals negative 16t squared plus 5t minus, uh, plus 1. What is h of 1? So try those. Okay, in uh, the first one here, um, we're going to input negative 3, right? It says, it says put negative 3 in for x. So substitute negative 3 in for wherever there's an x. So that's going to be g of negative 3 equals negative 2 times negative 3 plus 7. So we get a negative 2 times negative 3 is 6 plus 7 equals 13. So g of negative 3 equals 13. All right, over here, h of t, uh, we're not going to look at h of 1. What is h of 1? Well, that means we're going to substitute 1 in for all of the t's and simplify. Okay, so we have negative 16 times 1 squared. 1 squared, 1 times 1 is still 1. And then we get 1 times negative 16 is negative 16, plus 5 plus 1. So it's going to be negative 16 plus 6 is negative 10. So h of 1 is negative 10. All right, so we're just, again, we're just substituting those numbers in for all of the x's in our uh, function and then simplifying. All right, uh, what if we have a statement where x value is missing? Okay, so for example, f of x equals 9, where we've defined f of x to be some function, right? f of x equals 9. This means we're looking for the x value when the output or y value is 9. So what x value then outputs 9? For example, f of x equals 2x plus 17. Solve f of x equals 23. So what value of x could I put in here that would, would um, output 23? Okay, and it says 21, but it should say 23 there. Well, we can write this equ in, the, in the equation form. So we're saying what value of x, we're just writing this in a different way, what value of x could I put into the function that would output 23? So f of x is kind of like your y value, right? It's, it's the output. So if f of x is the output and it's equal to 23, then we can put it in for that over here. So when we're missing the x value and we have the uh, what is equal to, we can just solve the equation for that for that missing value. All right. So by examination, you can see the x value of six. Right? Two times. Um, actually, it would be three, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, three. So, because 2 times 3 is 6, plus 17 is 23. So, an x value of 3, not 6, uh, would make that would make that true. All right, real-world context. If Charity has $500 this month and spends $40 each month thereafter, the function that, would, that models uh, how much she has after x months would be um, this. And hopefully you notice 
like why it's set up you know this way uh, 500 is the starting value or that constant number that doesn't change regardless of how many months we go on and then we're, we're losing 40 for each additional month that, that passes and uh, and so hopefully you recognize you know why that's that's written that way all right what would f of 3 represent in the, in the context of the situation so f of 3 would mean we would put in three for the X, right? Well, what is X? X is the number of months that have passed. So F of three would represent how much she has, um, or um, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna call that um, the, her, uh, her, her value. Value after or amount, maybe amount might be better. So amount she has after three, three months. That's what that represents. Okay, and we could actually we could actually find that if we wanted to by putting in three here. Three times negative forty is negative one twenty. Plus five hundred is neg is a three hundred and eighty. So. Um, the answer would be 380, but what does it represent? It represents the amount after three months. All right, how about the next one? What does the statement f of x equals 380 represent in the context of the situation? So what value of x would produce an output of 380? Okay, so let's think about what value of x. So what month would produce an amount of 380? So how many months have to go by in order for 380 to be left? Um, and uh, I think we just did that, didn't we? It would be three. So this would be three here. And then lastly, what would, uh, what would F of 11 equal 60 represent in the context of the problem? Um, so if, if this were the case, F of 11 equals 60, that means after 11 months, that's the input, right? It's the x. After 11 months, you'll be left with 60 dollars, uh, um, right? So that's what that would represent in the context of the problem. So we have our input, and then we do the function to that input, and then it outputs the output. Okay. So so the 60 is the output, 11 is the input. Okay. In this in this situation. Okay, so we're gonna actually go into a couple of other things here. Uh, a visual, like a graphical representation of function notation, uh, as well as a table. Uh, and so hopefully you can kind of start to, to figure this idea out in these contexts as well. So it says circle the point that corresponds to f of three. That is what point on the graph has an x value of three? What point on the graph has an x value? Well, here's the x value of three. So that point right there has an x value of three. So um, and I see that, yeah, three, five. So f of three would be five, right? Uh, three here, f of three goes here because uh, you're inputting three and your output is, is five. Okay, let's go backwards. Circle the point where f of x equals two. So f of x equals two, so our output is two. So that'd be the y value, where's the y value two? And it would be right there. Okay, so that means that uh, an input of 1.5 has that output of two. So if I were to solve this equation, f of x equals two, x would be 1.5. Okay, uh, I know this graph, you don't understand what this graph is and, and you've never seen a graph like this most likely, but uh, that's not the point. The point is this function notation. So circle the point that corresponds with f of negative one. f of negative one, that's our input, right? So where's the input negative one? Where's the x value negative one right here? There's negative one as our x. So what point corresponds to that? You're right there. Negative one, four. So f of negative one equals four is what we would say. I'm going to write this out. f of negative one 
equals 4. Okay, how about this point right here? That's the point 1, 2, 3, 0. So how could I write that in function notation? At, um, the point 3, 0. Take a second, see if you can write that in function notation. Okay, so that would be f of 3 equals 0. When I input a value of 3, I output 0. That's the point 3, 0. Okay, so that's just uh, another example there. All right, 9. I circle the points that represent f of x equals 2. So where does f of x equals 2? So what value, value or values of x have an output of 2? Well, let's look here. Where is the y value 2? The y value is 2 along this horizontal line right here. What x values correspond to having an x value of 2? Well, I can circle this point here. So maybe um, a little bit, maybe over 3 has a uh, y value of 2. Uh, let's see, maybe negative 0.5, and then maybe like negative 0.75 or something like that. So we're looking for where this graph crosses and, and intersects this horizontal line, and it's at those points that we're talking about here. So we just need to find out what, what these x values are, and we kind of guess what they were a minute ago. Uh, that would satisfy this equation. So I wanted to give you an example of, of one that had multiple solutions so you could see a situation like that. All right, some follow-up questions here. Um, given the table to the left, answer the following questions. What is f of zero? So now we're looking at a table. What is f of zero? So we're inputting zero and we're looking for the output. So f of zero, so we're inputting zero over here on the left, right? This is our x value, so we're inputting zero, and an output corresponding to the input of zero is seven. So we're gonna input seven into that box there, okay? All right, so seven there, and then um, solve f of x equals six. So what x value produces an output of six? So let's see, where are our outputs? Our outputs are over here. So find an output of six. Oh, there it is. What's the input? What input value produced that six? It'd be four, all right? And then lastly, which is greater, f of two or f of negative nine? Well, let's see, f of two, f of two is 42. f of negative nine is up here at the top, is 48. So really we're comparing 42 and 48. Which one is greater? Uh, and of course, 48 is greater, so that's gonna be the answer there. All right, last one here. I've got actually three columns now. So I wanna describe this first, and then we're gonna get into the, into the questions. So we have an X, our X column here, just as always. And then we have our outputs for F here, and our outputs for G here. Let me bring it a little bit closer so you can maybe, maybe see that a little bit better. Okay, so we have our x values here, the corresponding uh, outputs for f here and g here. So basically, um, let's look at one line here. So if I were to think about um, this line right here, at negative one, this function is way down there at negative 40. But at negative one, this function's up at two. So we have two points that we're talking about here. We're talking about, um, I'll just put it up here for a second. Um, negative one, negative 40, and negative one, two. So this point is on this function, and this point is on this function. So um, each row actually is actually describing two different points. Okay, so let's go through these. Um, take some time to try these um, five and see what you can do. All right, so number one, g of negative one. So g, if I input negative one into g, what do I get out? I get out two, right? Negative one, two. All right, when I input negative one, I get out two. 
All right, that point we were talking about just a minute ago. All right, if I input five into f of x, so where's five as an x value? It's way down here at the bottom. What is f of x when five is the input? Oh, it's negative 106. All right, number three, g of x equals 17. Now we're kind of going backwards here. We're saying what value uh, can be inputted so that g of x has an output of 17? Well, let's go, let's look at g of x over here. Where are the, these are the outputs, right? Where is there an output of 17? Oh, right here, right? So what was the input that created the output of 17? It was four. So four is our answer there. All right, number seven, number four here. What is g of seven? G of seven. That's an input of seven, right? What is our what is our output when the input seven? Well, where is the input of seven? Oh, it's not on here, right? But we know uh, a linear function and the pattern that what's going on here. So twenty is at five. So what do you think would happen at six? Be twenty three, right? Go one more. What would happen at seven? That would be 26, um, right? 26. Because we're adding three each time as we go. All right, last one, the challenge one here. Um, solve f of x equals g of x. So we're trying to figure out when is the output of f equal to the output of g? So for, for what input, what input over here creates the same output for f as it does g? Well, let's just compare them. These are not equal. These are not equal. These are not equal. These are not equal. Not equal, not equal, not equal, not equal. Oh, here we go. At negative 4, f of x is equal to g of x. So our answer here would be negative 4. All right? So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of how to use... Uh, function notation, but also how to interpret it in the context of a problem as we saw earlier um, with um, the, the charity, charity's amount as, as it uh, decreases over time and how to use that to, to think about what f of x represents, but also um, when we have f of x equals a number, you know, what does that represent? Um, so anyways, hopefully you'll join us next time. In our next video, we're going to talk about how to take um, the, these functions called linear functions and graph them uh, as you've kind of already seen a little bit in this lesson today. So hopefully you'll join us next time.